Welcome to Small Arms Solutions. Throughout the uh, last couple of years, we've been doing a lot of live chats, and uh, I've had a lot of you guys request specific firearms. And uh, one of the uh, firearms families that I've been asked for is Noveski. Now, for the first year and a half or so, I had a hard time getting a hold of them. I didn't have any contacts over at Noveski. Um, but I was able to uh, meet him up at, meet up with him at SHOT Show and met a very wonderful young lady uh, who, who said, hey, I'll hook you up. So I got back from SHOT Show. I uh, sent her off my information, and next thing I know, I've got a uh, 5.56 and a 7.62 Noveski here to review for you guys. Now, Noveski is known throughout the industry as being one of the highest quality rifles in the industry. Uh, fit, finish, machining, barrel, accuracy, uh, the entire ball and wax, uh, Noveski is known to be one of the top dogs. Now, that doesn't go without having a hefty price tag as well. Uh, the rifle you're seeing here, which is the 16-inch Gen 3 N6 rifle switch block, uh, is it, it has an MSRP of $4,000. So, again, by no means are you looking at an inexpensive rifle. But, uh, in this case, you have to take a look at what you're getting uh, for all that money. Now, I have to say, uh, you pull the bolt back on this thing, it's like it's on ball bearings. I don't know what they do. But uh, they make it, when you pull that bolt back, it's just as smooth as smooth can be. Um, everything on it, there are no edges, it's, there are no, no tooling marks, it's uh, all precision high quality, which, again, you would expect for the $4,000 price tag. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over this from, uh, from butt to muzzle. We're going to go over what makes this, thing, uh, it makes this thing tick. The upper and lower receiver manufactured for billet aluminum. You have an extrusion on the front handguard. Now, the finish is, is sort of nice on here as well. This is uh, actually Cerakote Black, so it gives it that nice, uh, smooth, dull finish. Now, you look at the stock, you have the uh, Magpul STR stock with the standard receiver extension. H3 buffer. H3 buffers are very common for all the 308s. Uh, most of the 308s that are made to quote military standards will have an H3. You know, a lot of rifles that are manufactured that don't, people don't really recognize it because unless you have high-speed film, you won't see the bolt carrier uh, bouncing off of the receiver extension from the bolt carrier bounce. Now, you, you put anything other than an H3 in one of these, you're going to see that bounce. You put an H3 in here, that bounce goes away. So they're doing some stuff in there for you that you can't even see for as far as uh, reliability enhancements. Now, if you notice, we have no forward assist on here. I applaud Noveski for that. Uh, I don't believe that it belongs on there. I believe it causes more problems than it's worth. Uh, from a mechanical standpoint, I see there's no need for it. But knowing a lot of technical guys out there, they like to do the, the press checks and open the bolts to make sure it's around in there and close it and hit the forward assist. You know, I guess that's part of your training, I guess, for as far as ensuring the gun is loaded. That is not a mechanical necessity of the rifle. The rifle doesn't need it. But there are manufacturers who, who, who do put it on there. You know, so be it. But you still don't see, like, Lewis Machine and Tool or, or Knights or these guys putting them on there. They, they tend just not to belong. It's, it's just my opinion. You do have a fire cartridge case deflector on there. Now, the safety you have on here is the Magpul. It's a safety. Um, it's a very, very high profile. It's very easy to get to with your thumbs uh, on either side. Operates very smoothly. This has that 45-degree angle safety. It's uh, Some people prefer that over the standard uh, you know, M16, M4 profile. Magazine release over here. The bolt carrier you see on here is manganese phosphate finished on the bolt. Like any good military-grade bolt, you have a uh, bolt fire with a proof for cartridge. They make particle and proof tested. Of course, shot paint. It's because you know, the whole ball of wax to have an incredible bolt carrier group for durability and reliability. You have that. Now we look down here at the grip. This is the Magpul Myad. Everybody tells me I pronounce that wrong, but I don't know any, any other way to pronounce it. This is my favorite uh, pistol grip in the entire industry. If you look at any of the rifles that I build or any ones I modify for myself, you will always see this on there. For somebody who has size Sasquatch hands such as mine, uh, this fits like a glove when you put the right combination of uh, back straps and front straps on there. They chose not to go with the A2 lip on the front here uh, for your finger groove, which, you know, that, that can go either way. I can take it with or without that, but uh, makes the uh, the gun feel all that much more sturdy and, and, and support. Now, the trigger on this one is a standard mil-spec trigger. These can be got with Geissele triggers. Uh, or some of the other triggers as well. But this particular one here is a standard mill spec type trigger. Now when we look over to the other side, we have a DPMS type bolt catch where it has the extension out at the bottom, which makes it much easier for you to engage the uh, the bolt catch. And we have a Norgon Ambi bolt catch here, release on the side here. So if you're left-handed, you're, you'll be able to uh, drop your magazine. Now the barrel that we have here is a 16 inch stainless steel barrel. It's uh, fire either 7.60 by 51 or 308 Winchester. Uh, it's a 1 in 10 inch twist. You do have extended feed ramps on the barrel extension as well as the uh, the upper receiver. 
You have a low profile gas block, which this is what's referred to as the switch block, meaning you can go from suppressed to unsuppressed by, by the notch that you have on here. There's a version of this rifle that does not have that, but this particular one has that feature. And also to, uh, to my pleasure is this is a drilled and pinned gas block. It's not held on with set screws. Again, something that I feel separates the uh, military grade rifles from the commercial rifles. This will ensure that when this thing is fired and fired rapid if need be, that the front sight base will not migrate forward, which will end up cutting off the gas, causing short stroking and then eventually cutting it off. So the drilling and pinning, I feel, is a, is a great enhancement. The charging handle on here is the Geisley Super Badass Charging Handle. Now, as you see, we have quite a bit of room on here. The latches are large enough where you'll be able to grab from one side to, to pull back on either side. The hanger that we have on here is also a uh, proprietary to Noveski. You will notice that we have uh, several screws on the side here to hold that sucker in place. Uh, this is a key mod or M-Lock. This particular one is key mod. Everybody in the industry tends to be going towards M-Lock right now, so I imagine you'll be seeing this with the M-Lock as well. This is also hard coat anodized with a Cerakote finish on it. You can see we have a, we have a complete 1913 rail all the way on the top here. Now these do come with uh, backup sights. They come with the Magpul MBUS Pro, which uh, on the front and on the rear, I just don't happen to have those on here. The magazine this came with was a Gen 3 P Mag. The scope that I put on here was a Sig Sauer model Tango 6. The scope is a 1 to 6 power. It does come with a, with a lever on here that makes it much easier to adjust your uh, the power of your your magnifier. You also have two fiber optics on here to let you see, uh, you know exactly where you're at in lower level light. This is a illuminated reticle as well. Now this rifle is capable of doing much more than this optic. This is definitely a rifle that's capable of going out, you know, uh, well over 600 yards. Now, for as far as the SIG optics are concerned, I've been using these quite a bit over the last year or so. Uh, SIG has sent me several of them to look at. And uh, I have several different models. You know, for a rifle like this, this could we could have gone with a higher power one, uh, but this one here is a good combat grade type scope, one to six power. If you dial it down for close quarter, you have the one power. But if you need to go out there for 500 yards, you can still go up to six power and still be able to use it at that distance. And we have a Geisley mount on there, and the Geisley mounts are some of the finest in the industry. In fact, if they're not the finest in the industry, for as far as their quality, proper cants, they do what they're supposed to do. Um, I use quite a few of the different versions of the Geisley mounts. So I think without any further ado, we're taking something out to the range and we're going to see how it does. This was tested with several different kinds of ammunition. We had uh, Black Hills 175 and 168 grain OTM. We had some of the SIG uh, 168 and 175 grain OTM. Also, we had some of the Hornady uh, open tip match. And this rifle is sub MOA all day long at 100 yards. The reliability was 100%. This rifle here, I put about 400 rounds through. Uh, obviously, when you're starting to use that, game, that kind of ammunition, it gets rather expensive. But uh, consistently sub MOA, uh, just, just under. Uh, the trigger on here, I would prefer to have like a Geisley type trigger on there. Uh, something that would be a little more conducive to longer range shooting. But uh, you know, if you were to purchase a rifle like this, I'm sure you're going to put on an optic that does a rifle justice as well as a, as, a, as a trigger. We also shot steel with this, and we were out to about 600 yards with steel. And we were pinging steel one after the other with it at 600 yards. So um, for as far as a DMR type rifle, no question. For as far as a hunting rifle, no question. The rifle is not light, weighs around 10 pounds, but you also have a, a stainless steel heavy barrel on here as well, which aids in your accuracy. You do have a free-floated barrel on here. Now, for as far as reliability, as I said, it was uh, it was 100% with everything I put in it. For as far as magazines, we use P-Mags, we use DNH Tactical, we use Knights, and of course the uh, the Magpul, and every magazine worked, worked flawlessly without any issues. Noveski has been and continues to be an industry leader for as far as qu high-quality rifles. Now, my experience with them has been very limited uh, up until this point with uh, this in the 5.56. The only other time I ever run across them was at one of my armor schools, uh, one of our local police departments, Montgomery County Sheriff's here in uh, here in Texas. These guys were carrying uh, Noveski carbines, and I have to say the quality that we saw there was tremendous, especially compared to some of the garbage that we saw uh, at, at that school as well from some other companies, which I, which I won't name. This is, de this is a top-tier rifle. The, the price tag will uh, reflect that as well. It's like anything else. If you want the best, you're going to have to pay for it. And this is one of those type rifles that if you want this kind of quality, it's going to cost. But this rifle would last you your lifetime. It would do anything that you would require to do. Hunt, target, shoot, uh, longer range, self-defense. Uh, this will do anything you have. Ask it to.
Hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please click like, please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.